so still people are coming okay so, so this is how you are able to see the diagram of a scleren chyma as i mentioned scleren chyma is a the first point what we need to know is scleren n chyma n chyma means you all know that the meaning of n chyma n chyma means tissue n chyma means tissue and scleren scleren means it is hard so the meaning of scleren chyma is it's nothing but it's a hard tissue now as i mentioned it comes under simple tissue category first of all it comes under simple tissue and second property is it is dead tissue it is dead tissue in the last previous classes we learned regarding the parenchyma and colenchyma which are in general comes under simple tissue category but both the tissues are living tissues so the difference between parenchyma colenchyma with sclerenchyma is sclerenchyma is a simple tissue but it is a dead tissue it comes under dead tissue category but parenchyma and colenchyma they are in simple tissues category but they are living tissues so here the diagram represents the transverse section of sclerenchyma and this is the longitudinal section of sclerenchyma test tissue let us first of all the sclerenchyma is highly thick wall it is made up of highly thick wall cells so you can see the thickness of the wall here so the wall of the sclerenchyma ta cell is very thick you are able to see the thickness and inside the cells you will see a cavity which we call this is what this is called cavity which we call lumen see what they have written here they contain cavity which we call it as narrow lumen the lumen is even not broad it is very narrow narrow lumen is present so first of all it is a simple tissue it comes under dead tissue category and it is highly thickened wall and they contain narrow lumen so when we talk about these things these are the some of the characters a mechanical tissue should have means the main function of sclerenchyma is to provide mechanical support this means to provide mechanical support to the plant so as this tissue is a dead tissue the plant gets more mechanical support from the sclerenchyma rather than any other two tissues means parenchyma is a simple tissue which is a living tissue and colenchyma what we have said colenchyma is a flexible living tissue which also provides mechanical strength to the plant but here very clearly the sclerenchyma is meant for only mechanical strength because it is a dead tissue as i have mentioned in the introduction of the tissues plants are in general contain more amount of mechanical 
strength providing tissues so uh, this is one of such tissue which provides mechanical strength to the body so dead tissues can give more mechanical strength rather than the living tissues so that's why the sclerenchyma is the one which provides mechanical strength to the plant this is one of the important thing which we can see next one the thickness of the cell wall the thickness of the cell wall is mainly because of presence of a special thickening substance which is made up of lignin so lignin is the substance which provides you the mechanical support so this so lignin thickified walls are present only in sclerenchyma means lignin thickened walls are present only in the case of sclerenchyma <coughs> uh, due to the presence of this lignin uh, this lignin acts as a cementing substance in the sense when we construct house with the bricks we use even cement also so you imagine a brick as a cell another brick as a cell in between the cells the lignin is present as a cementing substance as we say between two bricks we keep the cement so the cementing substance is nothing but it's a binding substance which binds the both the bricks similarly the lignin acts as a cementing substance which binds both the cells of the sclerenchyma test so this is how normally the lignin functions like a cement and it provides hardness to the cell it provides hardness to the cell so that is how normally but you may often see i am just uh, maximizing the diagram are you able to see it seems so there are here and there some gaps are present you can see uh, i'll just change the color so that you can so this is the gap this is the gap this gap is nothing but it is unthickened region of the cell where the lignin region lignin thickening is present in this region in this region in this region but there are certain gaps are present in the cells which are not thickened these are called unthickened these are generally called unthickened regions these unthickened regions are in general considered as pits these unthickened regions are called as see what here the unthickened regions present in the sclerenchyma which we call them as simple pit we call it as a simple pit see you can see this is a pit 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 these are the regions where the lignin is not present so these lignin unthickened regions in the cells are considered as pit pits are in general meant for the exchange of substances in dead tissues and exchange of gases intercellular communication occurs in these regions now let us come back to the normal position now let us now sclerenchyma is of two types sclerenchyma is of two types means the tissue sclerenchyma is made up of two types of cells one long fiber cells long cells are called as fibers short 
cells are called sclerids. See, long cells are called as fibers. Short cells are called sclerids. So, I can just give you how a, uh, what can say, how a fiber can looks like. So, this is how a long cell which represents the fiber. So, this is a fiber. Now, let us look into how a sclerid is present. So, sclerid is in general, it has a different shape, but they are very small in size and So, this cell is in general called as sclerid and the long cells of sclerenchyma are called as fibers. So, these are the two types of cells which we see in general. Uh, coming to the fibers, fibers are generally 1 to 550 millimeters in size. So, these long fibers are generally present in vascular bundles they are present in vascular bundles as well as we call them a special structures called sheets means the sclerid cells and fibers are two types of cells in the sclerenchyma the long fibers are basically 1 to 550 mm in size and they are located in the vascular bundles as well as sheets in the sense they are bundle sheets means the structure which covers the vascular bundle is called bundle sheet cells we say. So sheets and vascular bundles are the structures which are in general seen these long elongated fibers. Now coming to the sclerids, sclerids as I said they are short and broad highly thickened sclerenchymata cells. So you can write describe the sclerids as they are short and broad highly thickened cells of sclerenchyma which we call it as sclerids. The sclerids are commonly called stone cells. The a common name for the sclerid is stone cell or otherwise we also call grit cell g r i t cells grit cells. So the term itself gives you an idea how hard they are. They are like a stone. They are like a stone. Take example, you all know that cashew nut. Cashew nut, you all know that. So, the nut of cashew nut fruit looks like this. And the outermost layer of this is very hard and it is made up of sclerids. Not only that, most of the hard seeds, their seed coat, the wall of the seed is made up of sclerids only. That is how they provide mechanical support to the some of the important structures of the plant organs. So, are you able to follow me? Yes, sir. Is, is, there, any, is there any problem in visual, I mean uh, streaming? Are you getting all the things comfortably? Means your my screen is visible and the words are legible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Okay, yes, thank sir. you for the feedback. So this is how normally yes, two different cells of sclerenchyma are described. Now let me give you what is the difference between sclerenchyma fibers and sclerenchyma cells which we call them as scleredes. So this gives you a very important and this is often asked for the two marks question. So that's why please be attentive. We will differentiate the differences between fibers and scleredes. Coming to the fibers and we will put here scleredes. So S C L E R E I D S clearids. Now, first of all, let me talk about the shape. Shape of the fiber. They are elongated. They are elongated and they have spindle shape. The fibers are elongated, spindle shape, thick wall dead cells. They are very thick and they are dead. That is how fibers are described. Now coming to the sclerites, they are broad thick dead cells. So both are dead in nature. They have both are having thick wall, but the shape is they are broad and short and they are elongated and spindle. This is all. Now coming to the second, how they are arranged. That is what we call it as aggregation or arrangement. So aggregation means arrangement. So these fibers are arranged in bundles. nets and cylinders. They are arranged in the form of a bundles, nets and cylinders. These are the shapes where they are aggregated and arranged in the form fibers. Now coming to the sclerites are occur singly or in small groups. They may arrange, they may present as a single cell or they may present in a small group. So, this is how normally we see the aggregation of fibers and sclerites. And th coming to the third point, third point in the sense, let us talk about covering. So, covering in the sense, is there any protective sheet around these fibers or screens we are talking? Did it have any cell covering or not? So, here the fibers do not have or do not form covering of any plant organs. So, they do not form covering of any plant organ. Similarly, when we see, as I mentioned, the sclerites will form covering of seeds. So, the sclerites means they form hard covering. They form hard covering of nuts that is what I have mentioned cashew nut and some of the seeds. So they the sclerites act as a seed wall or seed coat. So you may see the sclerites form a covering of nuts as well as some of the seeds. 
Now let us talk about the function of fourth property function. The function of Clearan Kaimar test fibers to provide mechanical strength to provide mechanical strength <coughs> here when we come to the sclerites they are involved in providing they provide stiffness to the plant they provide stiffness to the plant so that is how the sclerenchymatous fibers and sclerites differ in their shape aggregation covering and function so this is about the differences between sclerenchymatous fibers and sclerites. Now, let us look into the location where you find the sclerenchyma in the plant. So, let us talk about the location. Morning. Now, in the location, let us see sclerenchyma is occur as hypodermis. It occur. as hypodermis where in monocot stems as well as around the vascular bundles around the vascular bundle in xylem in phloem and hard coverings of seed and nut Similarly, the husk of coconut contains fibers the grit of apple guava and PA contains sclerenchyma. So, these are the locations where we see sclerenchyma. See, it is very clear. You have to write that it is present as a hypodermis in monocot stems. Actually, in dicot stems, the colonchyma acts as a hypodermis. Please remember, when I explain regarding the characteristics of colonchyma, Colenchyma in dicot stems acts as a hypodermis. But here in monocot stems, the hypodermis is made up of sclerenchyma. Now, I will give you what is hypodermis. Let us see. This is the stem outer covering, which we call it as epidermis the outermost covering of stem is called epidermis the tissue which is present below the epidermis whatever the tissue you imagine which is present below the epidermis we call it as hypodermis so in the case of monocot stems you will see the presence of Sclerenchymatous hypodermis. 
So what I am drawing these blue structure is nothing but the sclerenchyma tissue so which is present below the epidermis so the, the tissue which is located below the epidermis is always called hypodermis are you understood where the hypodermis is located hello so below the epidermis whatever the tissue is present we call it as a hypodermis but in monocots the hypodermis is sclerenchymatous in dicots the hypodermis is colenchymatous Okay, this is how normally you can see the presence of sclerenchyma either in the form of sclerites or in the form of fibers in the various places in the plant. As a hypodermis in the monocot stems, around the vascular bundles, inside the xylem, inside the phloem, coverings of the seeds and nuts, husk of coconut, Grit of apple, guava, and pea, all these structures we see the presence of sclerenchyma. Now, let us talk about what are the functions of sclerenchyma tissue. Now, let me talk about functions. Someone has sent messages. Why? Okay, let us come into the functions. Function, the first four mode function of any tissue is mechanical strength. So the sclerenchymatous tissue is mainly present is to provide mechanical strength. So, due to the presence of sclerenchyma, which enables the plant to bear various stress, uh, the sclerenchyma enables plant to bear various stress stresses due to the presence of sclerenchyma it provides mechanical strength when the mechanical strength is provided by the sclerenchyma the plant enables itself to bear various kinds of stresses easily this is the first and foremost important function of what we can say sclerenchyma now coming to the next important protection the important other function is protection protection in the sense it forms a protective covering around seeds and nuts it forms a protective covering in seeds and nuts that is how it gives protection now it has commercial importance the xylem fibers are commercially used for the preparation of various products The plants like flask, hemp, jute and coconut. 
these sclerenchymatous fibers are commercially are very economic importance and they are used to produce various kinds of products like jute gunny bags can be prepared by the jute coconut fibers will involve in the preparation of coir rope hemp is also used in the gun preparation of gunny bag fask is also used for the various such kind of fiber related products so means the sclerenchymatous fibers are having high commercial economic important value so these are the some of the examples of the plants from which the people isolate or extract the sclerenchymatous tissue and they use in making various products which are economically very very important that is how normally we say the sclerenchyma is well used not only for the plant and it is also used as a one of the commercially exploited product by the human so this ends the concept of sclerenchymatous tissue and its types its location its function in the plants if anybody have any kind of doubt related to the sclerenchyma please express yourself so that i can clear your doubt if at all you people don't have any kind of doubts i will just move forward for the next topic now what is hemp hemp is a plant hemp is a plant name all four what i have written is a name of the plant it is the common name of the plant though you can just google it so that you can see the plant afterwards regarding the plant details means what i have provided here in all four examples uh, all are basically uh, commercially important and i i can say that this is one of the very very important uh, the uh, the botanical name of this hemp is called cannabis sativa cannabis sativa it has a medicinal use as well as commercial fibers are used uh basically the hemp is in general called industrial hemp uh it is in general used for very widely to making different products like jute is prepared from the hemp jute also is one product of from the hemp also anything else other than these no sir okay so then i'll just move forward and i'll just talk about 10 to 15 minutes maximum please pay attention okay now i am just for a while i am stopping my screen be online
Okay, are you able to see the diagrams? Yes, sir. So, now we will yes. talk about protective tissues. So, So basically protective tissues are in general which helps the plants and cover their parts. Means the protective tissue is a outer layer of cells that cover plant parts like stem, roots, leaves, flowers, fruits etc means the tissue which covers the various parts of the plant we call as protective tissue so among these protective tissues we have two types of protective tissues we have two types of protective tissues one epidermis And the second one is called cork. So cork and epidermis are two protective tissues which are in general we see in various parts of the plant. They are protecting stems, they protect the leaves, they protect the roots, they protect flowers and fruits also. So all together the epidermis as well as the cork together involved in the protection of plant parts. Let us talk about epidermis. As I mentioned that outermost layer of the epidermis means outermost layer of the plant is called epidermis. Generally epi means upon derma means skin the layer which is present above the skin is in general called as epidermis then we can write it as epidermis as outermost covering or protecting layer outermost covering layer of the plant outermost layer of the plant is generally called it as epidermis. Epidermis is commonly single layer. It is always present single as a single layer. As I mentioned that in the diagram the single layer outer covering over the various structures of the plant parts are in general called this is epidermis this is made up of single layer barrel shaped cells barrel shaped cells now these cells are in general present in almost all the plants except in some gerophytes. So, some gerophytes they do not have epidermis. Except that means xerophytes like 
example of xerophyte allender there is a plant called as allender in this xerophytic plant they don't have epidermis outermost epidermis is absent in those plants okay now as i mentioned they are barrel shaped cells they made up of barrel shaped cells so the shape of the cell is barrel shaped and they don't have any spaces between one cell to another cell no intracellular spaces are present between them they are tightly packed closely packed without intracellular spaces they don't have intracellular spaces they are very closely and tightly packed cells often we may see over this sometimes over the epidermis you may have single layered covering over the epidermis layer which we call it as cuticle so this outer most layer over the epidermis we call it as cuticle in some of the plants cuticle is present some of the plants cuticle is present and cuticle is made up of a substance called cutin cutin is the substance which makes the cuticle here the cuticle is seen in mostly the xerophytic plants cuticle is present in xerophytic plants not only that above the cutin you may see some wax tissue wax coating is present as a covering over the cuticle so waxy's cuticle is a very common character of xerophytes note this one very important waxy cuticle is a characteristic feature of xerophytic plants so i have already told what is a xerophytic plant based on the water availability the plants are classified into hydrophytes mesophytes and xerophytes xerophytes are those plants which live in very low water available or zero water available places we call them as xerophytes so all the xerophytes according to the environment where they present they bear wax over the cuticle you can see the kelotropus plant telugu lo manu gillet jet antu ee gillet jet it is a good example of xerophyte you can see the whole plant whole plant contains a whitish waxy coating over the parts of the plant so that is a very good example where the kelotropus plant is an example of a xerophytic plant which bears cuticle as well as waxy coating over the parts of the plant you can observe in your villages wherever you stay this kelotropus plant can have all these structures uh, what i have discussed right now and you can experience now coming to the another important uh, along with the cuticle and the wax in the epidermis you will see another cell, special cells which we call them as stomata actually stomata are the openings present on the leaves for the exchange of gases okay so at some places of the plant leaf structures you will see minute pores these are called as a minute pores present on the epidermal cells which are in general helping for the exchange of gases
the main function of stomata is in general they are meant for the exchange of gases so during the respiration and photosynthesis they have to take oxygen they have to liberate carbon dioxide sometimes they have to take oxygen for the photosynthesis they have to liberate oxygen like this means whatever the gases they want to intake and they want to liberate that can be done with the help of these small minute pores which we call them as stomata are you able to understand my point what are stomatas yes sir yes sir now i will show you the under the microscope how the stomata are visible see this are you able to see this diagram yes sir now yes sir i am just encircling those regions these regions are nothing but the pores which we call them as stomata ivanni kuda stomata se now all these stomata are interconnected by some irregular cells are you able to see these cells what i am drawing with the white color yes sir these cells are nothing but epidermal cells so in the epidermal cells you will see here and there the presence of stomata all these the stomata are distributed in the epidermal cell so all these this is a a real picture which was showing the condition of the stomata along with epidermal cells under the microscope when you observe the real epidermal peeling or the epidermal layer of a a cell under the microscope you are able to see how epidermal cells look and among how these stomata are embedded this is stomata and these are epidermal cells okay now you are able to see now if you enlarge the stomata how it looks so they have two kidney shaped cells these two kidney shaped cells are called god cells and the cells which are present surrounding what i have just labeled them with the white color in the slide i am drawing with the blue color here and these blue color cells are in general called epidermal cells so they have two god cells now when we look into the god cells god cells i just show you the diagram of a god cell uh, okay so are you able to see yes 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 so now see i have maximized the god cell so now this cell is said to be the god cell and the green color cell are said to be epidermal cells now this is a kidney shape god cell so two such kidney shaped god cells are present and the difference between this one and this one you can see the stomata is closed here it is closed stomata this is open stomata 
See, this is the opening pore is present and the spore is closed here. Now here, the very important thing is when we look at the structure inside each God cells, they have a nucleus. Clear? They have vacuum. This blue structure is a vacuum. And now you can see the green structures. What are these green structures? Are you able to see these green structures? Yes. Yes. So, chloroplast cells. Means the very important point is God cells are the only the cells which contains chloroplast in the epidermal tissue region. This you remember this because this can be asked for your examination point of view for one more. So where do we see the presence of chloroplast cells in the God cell? Just a moment. Hello. Ah, sir. Room loan on class yet in an online class. Okay, but more to ready on So now the thing is that sorry for the disturbance. And what is what I wanted to confirm is God cells are the only the cells which contains chloroplast in the epidermal tissue. There is no other where in the epidermis the chloroplasts are present. Only the guard cells are the only the cells which contains chloroplast in the epidermal tissue. So that is in general we see. Now, in general, when we talk about epidermis, uh, epidermis basically involves in the protection as well as it prevents the water loss. It prevents the water loss and it also let us look into the functions of epidermis what the functions performed by the epidermis epidermis is first it's a protective layer it is a protective layer which prevents the entry of other organisms like microbes, pests, other organisms cannot enter into the plant because of the presence of epidermis. Next, it prevents the water loss. It prevents the water loss. It is another important. The water loss is prevented. It, it bears tomato helps in the exchange of gases. Exchange of gases. Next, it also involves in transpiration. So, these are the functions of one of the protective tissue which is epidermis. So now it is almost 9.56. I am stopping it here for today and you will not have class tomorrow. You will be having class on Monday. Enjoy the uh, not. So you will be having class on Sunday not tomorrow. Tomorrow is a Saturday. So you will be having class on Sunday. Please be ready at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So your class is situated at 8 a.m. in the morning. Please be attentive and attend the class. I will just deal with the another protective tissue and along with that very very important complex tissue that is xylem. So please don't miss this class because complex tissues are very very important for the examination point of view. If you have any doubt you can ask, otherwise you can quit the class. Thank you very much.